morning, church. Thank you for joining us this morning for a time of worship, um, prayer, and getting into the Word of God. Uh, before we get into singing, I just want to say welcome. My name is Anthony. I serve here as the worship director here at the amazing Cross Point. Um, and I want to thank you for taking the time out to tune in, worship with us, gather from your living rooms or wherever you're watching from. Uh, but before we get into singing these songs of praise and adoration, I want us to look at uh, this verse, uh, these couple of verses in the book of John chapter 17. And in verse 20, Jesus is um, doing this prayer to all of his believers. And, and as we come together as his believers, um, coming together, unifying each other, uh, unifying with one another and gathering to offer our praises and our adoration and our songs of just thankfulness to oh God. It, it's kind of cool to go back and see what God um, has prayed over us. So let's dive right in. So in verse 20, it says, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them glory that you, the same glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved me even as you have loved me. This is this is the God of the Bible. This is the God that we serve. This is the God that we sing to. And thanks be to Jesus Christ for making a way that we are um, perfect and blameless in, a, in, in the eyes of such a holy God. But I love how he right here is putting so much emphasis in unity um, so that the world may see what the church is supposed to look like. The unifying power of the gathering of the saints. Um, so as we go into a time of prayer, as we go into a time of worshiping right now, let us look at the chaos in this world and let us look back to the scriptures. Let us look back to God and remember that God has called us to be unified, especially holding a, a special charge to his church to be unified in a way that may inspire and impact the world for better. Church, let us rise to our feet and let us worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord, Jesus Christ this morning. Let us sing. has done. Yes, say. 
God above. Oh, hallelujah, God above it all. Hallelujah, God unshakable. Hallelujah, I've done great things. Sing it again. Oh, hallelujah, God above it all. Hallelujah, God unshakable. Conquer the grave, you free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. Be blessed, your freedom, awaken the life. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifts it high. Oh God, you have done great things. You have done great. songs of praise as we do every Sunday my God joining with the choir that's already proclaiming these truths in the heaven my God we give our lives to you my God for you already gave your entire life for us Lord thank you for providing a way for making it possible for our praise to have meaning and purpose, Lord, and not just being resounding symbols and noisemakers, my God, but having the meaning and the power to glorify a heavenly God. I pray that you may take this time and prep our hearts and our minds, focus us in, Lord, to receive of the power of your word, Lord Jesus. Change us. We are ready to receive what you have prepped for us this week, my God. We love you. We trust in you with everything that we possess, God. Because without you, there is no meaning in what we do, Lord. We love you. And in the mighty name of Jesus, church, we all say amen and amen. Good morning, Cross Point. Thank you so much for joining us online this morning, and thank you so much for your, your flexibility, your understanding this morning as we need it to cancel our in-person gatherings and move everything online after we learned on Thursday that somebody who participated in the first service of last Sunday uh, ended up testing positive for COVID. And for so everyone's safety and precautions, we moved everything online for this Sunday. But then next Sunday, we are planning to be back in person at 9 a.m. and 1030 at South Creek Middle School. So we've, we've talked with uh, doctors at Advent Health and to make sure that this is going to give enough time. Exposure was minimal since that we were practicing social distancing and people were wearing masks. So our, the overall risk was very low um, and feel like we can move forward with um, health and care by meeting together next Sunday 
in person at 9 and 1030 and then we will be live streaming the 1030 service. Now those in-person gatherings will be at South Creek Middle School. I've really enjoyed meeting outside, just being in God's creation as we're talking about lifting our eyes to the maker of heavens and, and, and earth. Like, this has been such a joy. But I'm also looking forward to being back at the school, that this is going to provide us the opportunity to begin to move forward with offering children's ministry. So we're going to have an announcement on that today after the service during the benediction as we wait and see who all's coming back together. But we do desire to move forward with children's ministry in the near future because there's many families with young kids um, who just aren't able to gather together at this moment. And we desire for the entire church family to be together in worship. And so thank you for your patience, for your understanding with that. I, I do also just want to make it clear that as we gather together in person, I love having children in the service. I don't mind the noise. I don't mind the squirming that I believe that, that the church is a family. This is what God calls it. We have six kids. I know the chaos that kids can bring um, with them. And that's okay. That's part of it. And so I don't ever want anybody to feel bad if their kids are moving or making noise or need to go to the bathroom again. Like, that's okay. I want you to feel just an open invitation that we can continue to worship together, even as we do a family-style worship for these coming weeks as we prepare to move toward uh, children's ministry. So thank you so much for your understanding in, uh, through all of this. So today we are going to be continuing. We are in week three of our series on the Psalms of Ascent. That the Psalms of Ascent are 15 songs that God gave to Israel to be sung as they journeyed from their homes to Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem was where the presence of God dwelt, in the temple. And so when you would come to worship, come to sacrifice, you had to come to one location. Uh, to worship and that they were called together there to travel together and to um, arrive together for worship at these specific times. And so they would sing these songs on the journey. It would take two or three days walking if they were coming up from the Galilee region to together at the temple in Jerusalem. And so these were the songs that would be sung along the journey. And, and we learned in week one, in Psalm 120, it was a song of repentance, that as you turned, as you said, in my distress, I call to the Lord, that you turn your back on where you have been dwelling and fix your eyes on the holy city of God. Right? It's a song of repentance that in the land that I've been dwelling that is rebellious against God, I want to turn, I want to be renewed. This is what I pray our prayer is together, that, that it is this desire for renewal before the presence of God, that we would turn our eyes from the comforts that we are seeking and fix our hope in Christ, in Christ alone. That is in the first song. The second song was a song of providence that we looked at last week, that, that along the journey, in the long journey of obedience, there are places of false worship where we can lift our eyes and fix them on them and, and think that, oh, maybe I'll trust in that. It's like, no, I place my hope, my trust in the Lord, in the maker of heaven and earth. And we keep our eyes fixed together on his holy city. This is where the psalmist says, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. And that leads us then to today. In today's psalm, if you want to turn with me to Psalm chapter 122, this is going to be a song of gathered worship. Now, now think about this for a moment. There are joys and challenges with this, that in God's providence, we would be in a psalm that's talking about gathering together, and we need it to move our worship service online. Like, this is not lost on me today. It has already been a hard week. Like, when we talk about this, when we consider the last six, seven months, there are joys and challenges in the reality of talking about gathering together in worship this morning. Because there's joys in that we know the awkwardness that it can be to, to stand in your living room and sing worship like we just did. 
That is vastly different from gathering together with others to lift our voices, is it not? The, the distractions that come as we're home and then just to start the service and trying to gather together. Do we do it at the same time or do we gather late? It, it can be challenging, but, but we taste the sweetness of being able to gather together, to be together. That, those, that sweetness of those first weeks when we were able to be back together and celebrate communion together as a church family, to sing together, to learn together, to surrender to God's voice through his word together what we taste the sweetness of that, but there's also challenges, right? There's challenges today in the midst of a pandemic that has caused us to need to together virtually rather than in person. There's real challenges as people pass away, as people move away, as people walk away. In the group that we travel with, that we gather together with in this journey of faith, as it changes over time, and we say goodbye to friends and we say hello to new friends. And we continue to fix our eyes on the holy city of God. We continue to walk forward toward Him. These are the joys and challenges during this time as we approach this passage that we cannot ignore. But we press into to say, Lord, teach me. Let me see your word. Let me be convicted. Let me be encouraged this morning. So let's read the passage together, pray, and then dive in. Psalm 122, beginning in verse 1. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city that is bound firmly together, to which tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. There thrones for judgment were set, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your word and I pray that this morning as we Together, that you would open our minds, open our hearts to hear from you this morning. Lord, use my words. Whatever I say that comes from me, let it fall away and be quickly forgotten. But whatever is from you, Lord, let it settle with weight and comfort and conviction on our hearts this morning. Lord, and we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a significant transition in this psalm compared to Psalm 120 and 121, because in the first ones, it talks about I. You know, in my distress, I called on the Lord. And then last week, as we looked about it, I lift my eyes to the hills. But then as we notice in verses 3 through 8, it kind of, it changes to now a collective saying, and you, you hope in the Lord, let your foot not be moved. And now there's this transition in these verses that said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go. And me becomes we, it becomes us, it becomes a collective. Let us go to the Lord. And there was gladness in that. There was joy in the sense of being together and not just being alone in this journey, not just walking by ourselves, but in being encouraged and walking with others. Like, have you ever tried to exercise on your own? Verse exercising under the encouragement and pushing of a teammate or coach. Right? Like, you run out of strength a little bit quicker when you're just doing it on your own. You, you, you say you're done, you've reached your end, you've reached your limit a little bit quicker. 
But when you have a teammate who's pushing you, when you have a coach who's telling you to, to keep running, keep going, you can dig a little bit deeper, you can run a little bit further, you can go a little bit faster, that, that your boundary is beyond what you perceive it to be. And they say, keep going, keep going here, run with me, keep pace with me. And you cross that finish line and you're out of breath, but you look over to, to your friend with gratitude, thank you for pushing me further, faster than I thought I could go. And together you cross that finish line. That is what is being said here. See, it is saying, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. It's that friend, it's that spouse who says when the alarm goes off, no, let's get up. Let's go to the house of the Lord. Let's gather together. Let's not just hit the snooze button and go back to sleep. Let's not just head out and, and go to the beach. Let's gather together. Let's do it. And you're tired and you're faint and it's been a long week, but you say, okay, well, let's do it. And it pushes you a little bit beyond what you would just push yourself to do. We need one another. And it says that he was glad. He was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. This is the significant transition as it moves from just us individually in these songs on the road to transformation to now be traveling together. But then it says in our feet, have been standing within the gates, O Jerusalem. See, all of this movement, these are songs of ascent. These are songs that are being sung on a two, three day journey from the home through the wilderness to Jerusalem, to the city where the temple of God was built, where his presence dwelt. And now the movement has ceased. The climbing has stopped and there is stillness. There is standing. This word is literally motionless. It, it is a respectful planting in the ground. This is when all movement ceases. The noises have been quieted. The motion of life is stilled. The journey has arrived. The joking and the laughter from the walking. The tears and the hurts of your feet. The fears and the frustrations along the way are all silenced in the presence of God, in their stillness. Like, can you imagine? You've been walking for, for three days. You've had great conversations with people. You've heard stories you had never heard before. Some people got on your nerves. The kids couldn't find their sandals every single morning. How they lose their shoes every morning, you'll never know. But every morning, hurry up, find them. The group's leaving, we need to catch up. Where did you put your sandals? And you can imagine that days rolled on, long walks, tired feet, deep conversations, and then you ascend to the top of Mount of Olives. And you look out over the city of God and you see where the temple was built and you're looking on at its gates and you stand in awe. There's excitement in your heart and you begin the descent down the mountain into the Kidron Valley. You pass by cemeteries where people have been buried, those who have gone before and passed away. You pass by that the olive trees where one day Jesus himself will weep before being crucified. You walk down into the valley and you climb up this short but steep ascent until you stand within the, the gate of the city. And, and out of breath from the long journey and the steep climb, you say, our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. You stand motionless, hand running across the stones of the city, marveling at stones eight feet long, 24 feet long. How did they build these upon itself, seeing the height and thickness of these walls from your simple home that you left behind, from the wilderness through which you have just crossed? You now stand in the gates of the city, and you are simply all silent. And you look at your companions and you're like, thanks. Thanks for encouraging me to come along. I was glad when you said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord and worship.
And then you begin to look up at the city, Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together. That the, the walls and the gates and, and the towers, the, the building of the city, it's magnificent. Every time that you enter it, you see its magnificence, its magnitude as you look up at the height of the, the walls. How did the architects fit these stones on top of one another? How did the strength of the oxen pull them to this place? The largest cornerstone to the smallest of details carved in the, in the stone. You see a city built and bonded together, standing adjacent to your travel companions who have also been built and bonded together in this journey. That together, with unity and oneness and solidarity, you have journeyed together to meet with God. See, Eugene Peterson says this in his book, A Long Road of Obedience in the Same Direction, that the city itself was a kind of architectural metaphor for what worship is, that all the pieces of masonry fit compactly, all the building stones fit harmoniously. There were no loose stones, no leftover pieces, no awkward gaps in the walls or towers. It was well built, compactly built, skillfully built, at unity with itself. See, just as the city of Jerusalem was built, each stone on top of another, so we are being built together as a spiritual house being fit together. And we see that, that this nature, even as he goes on, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, that different people from different family lines all coming to the same place, all gathering together at one place at the presence of God in all their differences and all their uniqueness and yet being built together in the same way that the various aspects and sizes and shapes of the stones were fit together to build the city of God. So we are being built together to form something that is greater than ourselves. Right? We are not just loose stones out in a field saying, look, I am a city unto myself. But we are but a stone that is being fit together with others to form a house that God desires. We cannot stand alone. We need one another. We are formed together. We are framed together. I think about, imagine, if you will, if your life was a canvas upon which the story of God is being written for his glory. The wooden frame beneath the canvas, it gives form, right? It gives shape so that the, the painting can be complete. But if you remove that form, if you remove that structure, you just flap in the wind. See, many of us are like this. We need and we are called to have this frame of structure of being built together. And yes, there is tension. Yes, there is hurts as staples go into the canvas to connect it to this frame. But there is structure here. There is form here as the painting is completed. But many of us want to isolate ourselves. We want to say, no, I can do this on my own. And in the end, like a canvas without a frame, we flap in the wind with no direction, no form, thinking that we have accomplished something on our own that can only be accomplished together. This is what it is being called to. That we are not called to walk this journey alone. We are called to walk the journey of faith together. We need one another. And it even goes on to say that this is the command of God. This is what he has decreed. It says at the end of verse 4, as was decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. That it was decreed, it was commanded. It is an imperative for us to go about this together. Together, together in worship. That we are commanded to be joined together. That our feelings may not always match this reality. We may not always feel like it or want it. But this is what we are called to. And there is beauty in that. See, Deuteronomy chapter 12, 
We see where this was commanded. But you shall seek the place that the Lord your God will choose. This was before Jerusalem, the place of Jerusalem, the place where the temple would be built, was actually built, and the command was given before then. But you shall seek the place that the Lord your God will choose out of all the tribes to put his name and make his habitation there, which was the city of Jerusalem. And there you shall go, and there you shall bring your burnt offerings and your sacrifices and your tithes and the contributions that you present your vow offerings, your free will offerings, the firstborn of your herd and of your flock. And there you shall eat before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice, you and your households, in all that you undertake, in which the Lord your God has blessed you. This was the, dec the decree to Israel, to gather together before God. And this is the same decree, the same command that is given to us in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and to good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. That day when Christ will return and he is preparing to return any moment now. The clouds could part and Christ could descend to take his church home at any moment. And he's saying, do not neglect as we await the day, fix our eyes on the presence of God and join together, encourage one another, consider how to stir one another up to say, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us worship together, stir one another up for love in good works. Do not neglect gathering together. <clears throat> and here's what's not lost on me. This is what I've been sitting in all week. And then we needed to cancel services and move everything online. And we're all sitting at home listening to this. And I think, like, God knew this. This didn't catch him by surprise. So what is he wanting to say to us in the midst of all this? I, I want you to hear. I, I think there's some things we need to consider as a church. There are, are those who are at greater risk of the coronavirus, who need to gather online um, for their health, for their safety, for, for maybe the health or safety of loved ones that they frequently come in contact with. They need to reduce their exposure and gather instead online. And, and I want you to hear from me that, that there is love and understanding for you in this time. That, that I also want to encourage you to the temptation for you is going to be to just watch the service whenever you want, to, to just get your, your fix. And I think you need to ask yourself, how do we gather together if you need to watch from home during this season? And one thing that, that we're trying to do is I, I think you can do that by gathering at the time when others are gathering. We try to have a platform where you can interact with others. There's many who are just silent, who just kind of watch in the background. But I think this is an opportunity to just introduce yourself, find out who the others are, connect virtually, that don't just remain anonymous. Like that, there needs to be an application here, right? Let us go. This is a, a we, this is a community, this is a spiritual house that we are being built into. This isn't just about you. And it's not just for you. But how are you being an encouragement to others? Uh, like, I, I think for many, you need to consider how you're joining together. I, I think for others... There does need to be conviction here. Like, we've been six, seven months with um, 
needing to, to gather online, for many, that can lead to complacency, uh, comfort of just it's a bit easier to, to watch from home, to get my church fix and then go on about my week. Do I really need to get the kids up? Do I really need to gather together? Yes. We are called to that. We are commanded to that. Together, together. Some of us have given in to comfort, to complacency. Some even to anxiety. That as more time has gone by, the harder it is to re-engage. We're planning to together together next week. We're taking precautions to do that safely. Some need to take that step and, and join together. To begin to, to re-engage, to register for the service and, and to worship together. That I want you to hear me saying, come. Let us go to the house of the Lord together. Now, here's the thing. I realize that this is, it's sensitive. It's hard. I trust the Holy Spirit in you. I trust that as, as you lay your heart before him, that he will comfort you, that if you need to remain distance during this time, that you do not feel condemnation or guilt but that you receive love and understanding from us, that we want to care and love you well. For others, I pray that the Holy Spirit would convict that if, it's, if it is appropriate for you to regather, that the Holy Spirit would convict and lead you in that way. We want to walk with you. I think this is the best way that we apply this passage in this season. Because we're called, we're called to do life together. And it's not even just on Sunday. This isn't like, hey, just come for the Sunday event, come to church. What this passage is saying is so much more than that. And we see that even as it goes on to verse 6. That there's three ways that we're going to see here that, that the church, as a spiritual building, that we are called to respond. That isn't just on Sunday, but I believe it's, it's what happens Monday through Saturday, Sunday through Sunday. A life lived together for the glory of God. And I say that because look at the first word in verse 6, pray. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Now, here's the unique thing about that word. See, that word pray, it is not the formal word that would be used if we were praying together in a worship service. This is a very informal word. It's a word that would not be used within the gathered service. See, Eugene Peterson in his book says this, that it is the word Hebrews would use when they asked for a second helping of bread, if still hungry, or if directions, if lost, worship together does not satisfy our hunger of God. It whets our appetite. Our need for God isn't not just taken care of by engaging in worship on Sunday, but rather our need for God deepens because we have gathered together. See, it's not like we just come together on Sunday to get our God fixed and then move on about our week. It is to whet our appetites, to deepen our hunger, to say through the week, I have looked to other things for my comfort, but my hope comes from the Lord. Let us go together. And then we leave from there, continuing to walk together, to pray for one another, to walk together, to do life together, to be an encouragement for one another in this journey of faith. That this is not just saying to engage in Sunday morning worship, though it is saying that, but it is more than that. It is saying, let us continue walking together. Let us pray for one another daily. Are we praying for one another? Who have you specifically prayed for this week besides yourself? And we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. This word is shalom. It's a word rich in meaning as the ocean is deep. It is calmness to external 
circumstances. It is comfort for internal afflictions. It is security in the presence of best friends as you mourn. It is the sweet contentment of fulfilled satisfaction. It is the work of God in the life of man to bring about completeness and healing in the midst of our brokenness and need. This is shalom. This is the peace for which we pray. Are we praying for and pursuing peace within our congregation, within this spiritual house that God is forming us into for His glory? Are we praying for and pursuing peace, praying for and pursuing shalom, the comfort, the calmness, pressing in together? As we surrender before God in worship, we become a people of peace within our walls and to the community outside. Is this our heart? Is this our prayer church? Is this what we pursue? Or when it comes to church, are you only focused on yourself? Because it is praying for the peace May they be secure. There is the prayer, the shalom, the peace, and the security. Peace within your walls and security within your towers. It is this fortification of a city. It becomes a place of safety. Because see, it is within the walls that you retreat at night. As the gates are closed and the people are protected, it is just like when you lock your doors at night. When you close the garage door and you lock the door and you go to sleep and there is a sense of security that you can rest knowing that that there is protection there. This is the kind of security that the people of God bring for one another. That are you moving away from people, isolating yourself, or are you leaning in? Are you chasing after other comforts or are you pursuing comfort and security within one another? Because here's the thing. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 4 and 5 says this, as you come to Jesus, a living stone who was rejected by men, but in the sight of God, he is chosen and precious. That Christ is a living stone. He is our living cornerstone of a spiritual house. And he goes on to say in this passage, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We are being built into a spiritual house. You are a living stone that is meant to fix, be fixed together for the glory of God. This isn't, we cannot just be an individual living stone out in a field and assume that we ourselves are the temple of God, that we alone are the church. The church is the gathering of Christ's body, being fit together, formed together, built together, bonded together for his glory. Are you leaning in or are you leaning out? We are called together. And so I want us to consider that in these last verses. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, peace be within you. See, here's the thing. If you're like, Does, can we equate Jerusalem with the city of God? Absolutely. Is this talking about people and the city? Absolutely. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, peace be within you. The same thing that has been said of the walls of the city is being said of the people with whom he is journeying with in faith. It is for brothers and companions. When you think of the church, do you think of yourself only? Or are you thinking of others? Are you thinking only of what you can get out of it, what you need, how others are relating to you, or are you considering how others need you, how others are leaning on you for comfort, for security. See, the American church will tempt you to consume. American evangelicalism is a buffet, a smorgasbord, to take what you need and move on. 
But God's church, the Christian church, is calling us to surrender to service. That for my brothers and companions' sake. Are you saying, for my sake, this is what I need and leaning out? Or are you saying, for the, the sake of my brothers, for my companions, let me lean in. And I will say to them, peace be within you. We are called to serve. We are called to love. But here's the thing. I also don't want you to hear that, that the end goal is only for our companions, only for others. That is not an end in and of itself. It's not just saying, so love others, self-denial. You know, it's true. Matthew 23 says, the greatest among you shall be your servant. We are called to serve others. But the reason why we serve others, that is not the goal, but that is a means to the goal. We serve others for a greater purpose. It is not just for them, but it is for the glory of God. Look at this final verse in verse 9. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. See, it is for His sake. It is for the sake of God in His glory, in His name, that we seek the good of others. This is what we're called to. Seeking the good of others is secondary. It's a means to a greater end. And that greater end is for God's glory. It is for the sake of His name. The church exists for the glory of God. We seek the good of others together in community for the glory of God. This is what we are called to. This is a song of gathered worship. This is a song of saying together. Together let us go and stand in awe before a holy God. And so this morning, in application, I want to encourage you in, in three ways to, to do one thing, to, to check your heart. Again, I trust the Holy Spirit within you. And so would you just lay your heart before God this morning and, and ask him to, to search you, to know you, your, your motivations, your heart. Is the leaning of your heart towards individualism? or community? Like, is your intention to just go it alone, do it yourself, it's about me, myself, and I, what do I need, what am I getting? Or is your heart leaning towards community, together? Serving others, contributing, stirring one another up. For my brothers and sisters, all to the glory of God. What is the posture, the leaning of your heart this morning? Is your heart number two, is it distanced? Or is it being bound together, built and bounded together, just as the city was? Individual living stones unified together into one house of worship. Are you pressing in? Are you seeking to, to close the gaps? Are we becoming something better together than any of us could accomplish on our own? Or do you find yourself just off in a field, a living stone disconnected from everyone? And here's my thing. I'm not asking how others are relating to you. That's for them. But I'm asking you, what is your heart? You're leaning towards others. Are you leaning in or leaning out? Are you, number three, to check your heart, consuming or contributing? Are you only here to, to get what you can and then go on about your week, disconnected from everyone else? You've been fed, filled, and now you're disconnected the rest of the week. Or are you here to contribute? To be a blessing, to be a place of security and comfort, to stir one another up for love and good works. I pray that God would convict where conviction is needed. I pray that he would encourage and comfort where that's needed in this time where social distancing may be necessary. I don't know where your heart is this morning. 
But I pray that you hear the words and the call for us this morning. Come, let us go and worship the Lord together. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you would speak to our hearts this morning. To be in this passage on a day when we needed to cancel gathered services, to gather online, and feeling the weight of this passage and call together, together to be built together, Lord. My heart is heavy and burdened. Lord, would you help us to navigate this time, to know how to love and care for one another well, how to encourage and challenge one another with love and understanding. Lord, would you build and bond us together for your glory? Would you unite our hearts? Would you call all the diversity together in unity at the foot of the cross, Lord? Our hope is in you and you alone, Lord. At the foot of the cross, we are unified. At the foot of the cross, we are bounded together. At the foot of the cross, we find our peace and our security and our comfort. And so, Lord, together, we stand motionless and in awe of you. And in Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue worshiping. If you guys are familiar with the song, just close your eyes and meditate on the words and sing along with us. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken, for great are you. Sing it again. You give life and you are love. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. For great are It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise We pour out our praise It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise to you only For great are you
shout your praise Our hearts will cry these bones will sing
Thank you so much for joining us in worship this morning. If you are new to Crosspoint, we would love to hear from you. Uh, the easiest way to really get in contact is if you were to text the word XPoint to the number 97000. So simply you can pull out your phone, type in XPOINTE to the number 97000. That's going to send me a text, allow us to be in communication. I'd love to hear your, your story, answer any questions that you might have. And if you will, today, if you're joining us online, you're going to see up in the corner just a button to check in. Let us know that, that you were here in, in any ways that we can be praying for you in this coming week. Also, what want to say thank you for your continued generosity. Um, it, it is a blessing to continue to partner together that for the glory of God, we would become disciples who are making uh, disciples together. And so thank you for your continued generosity. There are three ways that you can give. You can find all of these ways at xpoint.com. Uh, simply go to the give and you'll see that you can give right there online. You can give via text or you can mail a check to an address that you'll see there. And so thank you for your generosity. Also, just as a reminder, there's a few announcements today. First, we will be gathering in person next Sunday at South Creek Middle School. That's going to be at 9 and 1030. And then the 1030 service will be live streamed right here on our webpage and in the Church Center app. So would love to have you join us in person. We will be taking registrations uh, for that because we are limited to 50 people. Um, masks will be worn the whole time along with social distancing to make sure that we are taking all the precautions. You can look online for what you can expect at those services. Now there may be some question because on Friday, Governor DeSantis did uh, move Florida into stage three of reopening. We have heard from the Orange County School District that they are looking over what that means and how they will be moving forward. We do not yet know how that's going to impact fully uh, our gathering at the school. As we get more information, we will be sure to communicate that with you. So again, thank you for your patience, understanding, flexibility in this time. So with all of that, I do want to pass on the announcements to Jenny and Steve Bauman as they update us on some exciting new things with children's ministry and other opportunities for how we gather together in this season. Hey, Cross Point, this is Jenny Bauman. I'm the director of kids ministry for Cross Point Church, and I just wanted to give a quick update on what we are doing with kids ministry right now. Um, while we are not meeting, we have been providing videos for all of our kids, and we even have a Bible memory challenge going on. And I can't wait, because this is our first month, and I want to see who is going to have their Bible verses memorized by the end of this week. So, in the future, we do hope to gather again as a uh, kids ministry and program what we plan to do first is to meet as a congregation and see how things go see how many volunteers we have and and everything like that and then we are going to start with our smallest little peeps and go up from there and as we have volunteers to help us and people that want to become part of the kids ministry team we will add more classes so we are excited about what god wants to do with cross point kids 
until we are able to start programs, we want you parents to feel free and comfortable to bring your kids to the service uh, as, as it works for you and your family and as you feel safe. So we are happy to have little cries and little noises and wiggles in the service. We are all a family walking through this together. So we welcome your kids into the service with us. Thanks so much and have a good Sunday. Hi, my name is Steve Bauman. You've heard my other half, my better half, speak on the, the children's ministry here at X Point. And, and I want to talk about the exciting ministries that we have. We have two announcements. One is the community groups that allow people like yourself, people like myself, our families involved in a community group where we've connected with other couples and singles and allowing ourselves to be known and to know others. And, and that really is a huge part of connectedness that we have, have experienced and, and we want you to experience it too. So please, if you do not have a community group, people that you can be real with, where you can really set in roots and really wrestle together. These are dark times, so we need each other. We need to love on each other, and this is a great way to, to connect with others. So I highly recommend you sign up for that. You can go on our website at xpoint.com uh, and go to groups and sign up that way, or you can go through our uh, Church Center app and hit the groups and you can sign up there or call Pastor Steve or Mary Ellen that we can help you there in that way as well. And another ministry that's going on that's exciting and that I'm going to be part of help leading is the the men's group. We have a Sunday that we're we're getting going. We haven't launched that yet, but we've launched our Thursday morning early 6 a.m. meetings and uh, people have to get to work. So we try to be done by 730. But this is a great way to connect also with guys and just love on each other and be guys together. So uh, it's a great thing. So please join us if you are uh, in need of that. And we just invite you. We want to be um, very hospitable. And, and you'd contact me, Steve. And this is my, my email, Steve, S-T-E-V-E, dot -E, Bauman, B-A-U-M-A-N-N, -N, at the letter C-R-U dot org. So that's how you can get a hold of me. I want to close now with a personal story. When I was a substitute teacher, and, and there was a lot of abuse that I received from the kids, of course. And so I substituted at this, uh, it was a Photoshop in which uh, kids would learn how to develop pho photography. And there was a dark room, and it's called the dark room for a reason. It was very dark. And as a substitute, I was concerned that some kids were going to pull some pranks and be naughty and maybe linger in the dark room because I didn't know who had left and who had, was still around. And so I was concerned I can't just leave the building and lock up without making sure you know, there is somebody in the, in the dark room. And so I couldn't find the switch to get in there. So now I'm thinking, I got to go in there and find these kids if they're there. So I'm literally just crawling along the wall thinking I'm going to trip over a kid that's hiding in there because I can't see a thing. It is just pitch black. And as I finally became comfortable with the fact I can leave this place and know that there's not kids there, I realized, how am I going to get out of this room? Because it was so dark. And so as I was looking away from the door where the light was, it, I couldn't see a thing. It was dark as it could be. But when I turned around towards the entrance, there was light there. And it was shocking the difference between going away from the light and walking towards the light. And so I believe the illustration carries over that when we keep our eyes on Jesus, there is light through dark times. And we have that light. And it is a beautiful thing. But when we take our eyes off of Christ, which... I'll be honest, I've done in this period of COVID and uh, it's, it's been difficult and putting my eyes back on Christ is so sweet. And so we highly recommend the men's group and the community group so that we can connect together, keeping our eyes on Jesus as we walk through these tough days. So we love you. We want you to be a part of our group. We want you to be a part of our ministry and we are the body of Christ sharing these tough, troubled times together. So. The famous words, go and be the church. Testing, testing, and then receive the... Uh, 
And that's why you <clears throat> put your phone on silent. Thank you so much. Oh.